that we all know very well how great thou art. It's a Christian hymn based on an original Swedish hymn entitled O Stor Hud. I think I'm right on that. Written in 1885 by Carl Rover. The inspiration for the hymn came when Carl Rover and some friends were returning home uh, from Monstrous, Sweden. That's a little piece of Menominee, if you want to understand that. Where they had participated in an afternoon service. It was the time of year when everything seemed to be at its richest coloring outside. It was very warm. A thunderstorm appeared on the horizon and soon lightning flashed across the sky. Strong winds swept over the meadows and billowing fields of grain. The thunder pealed in loud claps. Then rain came in a cool, fresh sense of showers, and in a little while the storm was over, and a rainbow appeared. When Broker arrived home, he opened the window and saw the, uh, the bay of water like a mirror before him. From the woods on the other side of the bay, he heard the song of a thrush. The church bells were tolling in the quiet evening. It was this series of sights, sounds, and experiences that inspired the writing of the song. Naya, our soloist today, will also share these beautiful words with you during the offer.
gotta love a Sunday morning where you can start off clapping, huh? Like raises the bar for the whole service. Ooh. Good morning, everybody. Wonderful to have you here on this Sunday morning. It's great to be here, great to worship together, great to be the church together. I'm more dressed up than I have been in a while, and it's not because it's cooler out this morning. It's because we do have a special occasion today. We have a baptism today, and I'm super excited to welcome Lincoln into God's great big family with all the rest of us. We're also blessing the backpacks this morning. Kind of feels like we're getting back to it, huh? And then it's Labor Day next week, but, ah, you know, we'll, we'll just be here and celebrate this morning for what it is. So it's wonderful to have you all here. It's wonderful to have you all joining us online, on cable, however we're reaching you. It's great to have you as part of our big church family, too. I have no other announcements before we begin our service today, so we are going to open with a thanksgiving for baptism, and I invite you to stand for that, and you can find that on page 97 in the front of your hymnals. We begin our worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to, to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we'll join in singing our opening hymn number 843.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in praying our prayer of the day. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to invite the family up for the baptism. And if you wish to follow along with the baptism, you can find that on page 227 in your hymnals. 227. I gotta make sure I have all my props. Okay. Let's see. So you two can come right here. You guys come over here. We'll all, we'll all get up here together. We'll all fit. It's a bigger space than it looks like at first. Will you hold that for me? We're gonna need that in a little bit. Okay. Well, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And that is also wonderful. Will you guys remind us who we have here with us today, who we are welcoming and who we are baptizing today? Oh, we look so excited. You want to tell us, Lincoln? No. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln Richard Gaussman. Lincoln Richard Gaussman being welcomed into the body of Christ today. Okay, parents. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Lincoln baptized into Christ? If so, say, we do. Wonderful. As you bring him to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with a few responsibilities. To live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, Place in his hands the holy scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Now, do you promise to help Lincoln grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say we do. We do. Excellent. Okay, sponsors. This one's for you. Do you promise to nurture Lincoln in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say, we do. Check. Congregation. This one is for you. People of God, do you promise to support Lincoln and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. Look at this big old team behind you, Lincoln. I invite everybody to stand now as we profess our faith. Profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You guys can be seated now. Thank you. All right, it's almost time. We just want to bless this water again. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I have a different blessing because we read the we read the one right there on the page earlier, and I don't want to read it twice. Blessed are you, holy God. You are the creator of the waters of the earth. You are the fire of rebirth. You poured out your spirit on your people, Israel. You breathed life into our dry bones. Your son, Jesus, promised to send the spirit to us that the world may know your peace and truth. Pour out your spirit and breathe new life into those who are here baptized. By your spirit, adopt us all as your children. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Lincoln, are you ready? Let's see how this goes, buddy. <laughs> you bring him on over. Lincoln Richard Gausman, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lincoln, you belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray, everybody. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your sons and daughters new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Lincoln with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And Lincoln, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You did so good. Okay, girls, you have that candle now? All right. Can I have that? And I'll hand it right back to you. We give you this candle. We give Lincoln this candle so that we can be reminded that Jesus is the light of our world, that we never walk alone, that we're always loved. And you can light that. Maybe you'll remember. You can help mom and dad remember when it's August 27th and we can light the candle for Lincoln every single year and be so thankful for what a great brother he is, but also how much God loves him too, just like he loves you too. And that's a great, great thing. But that's not the only gift we have because, you know, we talk, we've talked about this. That baptism is kind of one big party, a one big party where we welcome everybody into the family of God. So we have gifts to help you. We have, the, we have the Bible so you can place, so you can help keep that promise to teach Lincoln about Jesus and place the word in his hands. And we also have this lovely medallion with his name on it and this beautiful fixture fit for a candle so that, so that this day can be remembered extra special. So I'll put that back here. I have more things to hold more things. You know, we got the paperwork to prove that you were here, that we all did this, because apparently baptisms can't happen without paperwork. We love good order in the church. We also have this quilt, this quilt for Lincoln to remind him that he is always wrapped up in God's love, and hopefully the church can remind him of that too. Look at you. You're such a good model for us. You're such a good model for us. And then I have this little book for the two of you. If you're ever in need of some extra blessings. Oh, no. 
Oh, I hope you might be able to find some in here. And it's wonderful to have you guys because you are all blessings for all of us. But everybody knows we need to hear some extra blessings sometimes. Okay. How's that for gifts, huh? I told you it was one big party. You're so welcome. Okay, congregation, it's our turn again. Let's wrap up this show here and let's welcome our newly baptized brother in Christ. You can find that response on two at the bottom of page 231. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Thanks be to God for that. Let's all show a sign of acclamation and applause, huh? Yay! Lincoln, you did so great. Abby, you can blow out that candle. And I guess it didn't make it into the bulletin. That's okay. But at this time, we're going to sing hymn number 446. 446. I'm going on a journey. And then Lincoln and I are going to go on a journey around the church. And I'm going to introduce them to all of you. Thank you, girls. On behalf of the congregation, we are honored to have you, Lincoln Richard, as our member here at Zion. Our first reading this Sunday is Psalm of David, number 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. 
The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Our second reading is from the 12th chapter of Romans, beginning with the first verse. This is all about life in God's service. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say, among, say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. And I invite everybody to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. And our gospel today comes from the 16th chapter of Matthew, verses 13 through 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples to not tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Well, if it wasn't clear from the last verse, that, that last direction was not followed. That direction was not followed because somebody told somebody and the word that Jesus was the Messiah got out, and here we are, here we are today, proclaiming those same big things. And I bring you all grace and peace in the name of our God that gives us all things, that gives us great joy, and Jesus Christ, who shows us what that joy looks like in the world around us, and in our bodies, and in our life together. Amen. So. This is an interesting question. Who do you say that I am, that Jesus gives his disciples? And it makes me think, who would we say that Jesus is? But if somebody's gonna ask us who we say that Jesus is, that means we'd actually have to have a conversation. We'd actually, be, actually have to have a conversation with each other about our faith. So I guess this is my question for all of you, you know? How many of you actually feel like you would be comfortable talking about, talking about your faith with other people? I don't mean 
guy, guy with the big signboard outside sporting events and other gatherings telling people on the microphone about Jesus. That's not what I mean, but like just in casual conversation, if something about, something about faith came up or some, some question that your faith could answer, would you actually be comfortable? Would you actually be comfortable talking about that? Or even confident? How many of us would actually feel confident? You know, I may look confident, but for all I know, that could just be because I have expensive pieces of paper and a duty and an obligation to get up here and try every Sunday. In reality, I may not be any more confident than all of you. I think we all have answers about, about Jesus or what, or what faith means to us or what faith is, but then we're put on the spot just like these disciples here today too. And all of a sudden, whew, we might get a little freaked out. And why is that? Do we think we're maybe unqualified to answer that question? Kind of like I said, like my expensive pieces of paper mean that my answers would be better than yours. Or maybe we're afraid to be wrong. Maybe we're afraid to be wrong about who Jesus is. There's a lot of power in Jesus asking this question to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? And we'll never know because it wasn't in the scripture, but I imagine there was a really awkward pause after Jesus first asked this question to the disciples. Yeah, who do you say that I am? And of course it's Peter. Peter who's brave enough to speak up. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And that means something. Peter calling Jesus the Messiah means something very specific, very specific in his world. That Jesus being the Messiah means that he is the one that those prophets, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, all of them and the scriptures told was to come, who will deliver them, the savior and the redeemer of God's people. And that saving and redeeming for Peter and all those, all those prophets, that looked very specific too. That it was about a kingdom and that God would return and restore the glory of Israel, an actual empire, a physical empire in the world. And it would be a kingdom that would have no end and God would reign forever and God's people would experience great joy. But as the story unfolds, we know it wasn't quite like that. And after our reading leaves off today, Jesus actually tells those disciples that being the Messiah, the son of the living God, the savior and redeemer of the world, is gonna look really different from what everybody's guess, best guess was from the, world, from the words that may, they may have received from the spirit. That it's not gonna look like kings and an empire coming, but there's, when you are the Messiah, that means you will experience pain and suffering, sometimes by your own brothers and sisters, that it's not, it's not all glory and triumphant, but to be the Messiah and to redeem, to redeem people and save people and liberate people or, or loosen people from the things that bind them, from the sins that bind them, that means that you might experience pain and be touched by the world around you too. Peter was not so happy with this answer. And the funny thing about Peter is that, and really all the disciples, is that even after this, when Peter says, Jesus, you are the Messiah, you're the son of the living God, you're the savior, he forgets it pretty quickly. Because remember that Peter is the one that denies Jesus. But Jesus gave Peter the keys that day when he answered that question if you heard that. And Jesus says that Peter never lost those keys. Peter never loses the keys even though he denied his Messiah. Even when he lost sight of what it really meant or forgot the things that Jesus told him to do or how followers and God's people are called to live, love, act, and serve, and move in the world. He never lost the keys. 
And because he never lost the keys and Jesus forgives him and still loves him, Peter goes on to spread the good news and open doors with those keys to the love of Jesus Christ with people far and wide across all nations in the beginning generations of the church and these people who choose to follow Jesus. And because of that, because of that fact, I wonder why Jesus actually praised Peter in the, fir in the first place. And specifically, I wonder if Jesus didn't praise Peter because he gave the right answer. Maybe he praised Peter because he was just brave enough to try and answer the question, to have enough faith to share his faith, to try to put a name to it and an expression to it. Peter had enough faith to try, to be faithful. And maybe that's what Jesus rewards him for, what he praises him for, and why he gives him the keys to the kingdom of heaven to share with the world around us. I feel like that's just all we're called to do too, to just try, just have faith in our faith that we have in God so that we can open those doors and share God's blessings with all of our neighbors, whoever that may be, face to face in front of us. There's a theme, I think, today in our service of blessings. You know, we're blessing backpacks. We bless a new beloved child of God. And the kingdom of heaven is all about blessings. And if the kingdom of heaven is already here, as Jesus said, that means we already have plenty of blessings to talk about and how they will grow and become even greater in the world yet to come in the future that we will share together. If we look at Romans, we know we've been blessed with different gifts and different stories that allow us to tell each other about Jesus, about the God we've seen show up in our lives. Those stories are powerful. And sharing those stories, feeling confident and assured that the God you know is a God who loves you and celebrates your faith. When we share that, we unlock doors and help each other grow in our faith. When I think of growing, I also think of growing pains. And that's the scary thing about sharing your faith or having other people share their faith with you, is that your perception and your mind might be changed. But ju just because of that, just because your mind, just because your answer to that question may not have been what it used to be, that doesn't disqualify or should, sh or should scare us away from doing so. Because ultimately, part of that saving and redeeming that Jesus does, it means we're saved from having to have the right answers. We just get to have faith that he is the answer and that love is the answer. And we're redeemed from having those conclusions that we might hold on to. We're redeemed and forgiven for the ones that may end up actually doing more harm than good and leading us away from loving God and our neighbor. And what a wonderful blessing that is, that God works even through our misconceptions or our questions and our doubts. We're thankful and blessed to have people who have shared their faith with us when we were young, and now we get to grow up and share our own faith with our own children. And then maybe one day those kids actually teach us about where they see God's blessings and how they find their faith in Jesus, where they've seen it. We're thankful and blessed to have one another as neighbors who help us carry and honor the promises of love that we make out of love for each other. I don't want to say this is a gotcha, but remember, you all did make a promise to this little boy about 15 minutes ago, you know? But it's not up to you and only you. We all do it together. That's the beauty of being baptized into one family, knit together in God's love. We don't have to do it alone. We're blessed and we're thankful to have a place where we can gather to worship. 
where we can gather to worship and remember the source of our blessings and ground ourselves in grace so we can practice being gracious to others. We're blessed and thankful because not only are our works and our acts a blessing, blessings for the world, but you yourself, your very bodies, your very lives are God's greatest blessing, are God's greatest blessing to the world. We're thankful and blessed to have things like baptism that remind us of that fact, that you're always loved, you're always forgiven and redeemed by the love of Jesus. And that's renewed each new day, each new day. There's so much to be thankful and blessed for. And I know this because you and people before you and people in my life that you don't know have had the keys that they could not lose because they had faith in the promises they had been told about God and thought that they were worth sharing, that they wanted us to know that there was a savior who loves us bigger than we could ever imagine. And now we get to pass it on, pass it on, and we pass it on through our faith. So I'll tell you once again, have faith in your faith that you have. God has faith in you. And it has been given to you, that faith is a gift given to you by God and Jesus, who gave us all the keys so we can go where Jesus calls us, tell us, tell and show our neighbors who he is, and just keep unlocking doors so everybody can know, so everybody can find Jesus, and that the love of God can flow out into the world, into a world desperately in need of blessings and knowing that it is blessed. And above all, it is a blessing and I am so thankful, and maybe you're half as thankful as me, that I get to share in that work with all of you. That is the greatest gift. And that every Sunday and every day, we get to go and tell and share about the difference that Jesus makes in our lives and how faith transforms the world around us. Thanks be to God for you, and thanks be to God for that. Amen. And our hymn of the day today is number 654, The Church's One Foundation.
Okay, now if you have a backpack, come on up and we're gonna bless our backpacks right now. I wanna see these very cool backpacks. Cause I have one of these normal adult backpacks. Look at that. That's my <coughs> backpack. We have the same backpack, Ted. Yeah, we do, but yours looks much nicer than mine. Sweet deal. Look at all you guys. Oh, how is everybody today? Good. Who started school already for the year? Cool. Who's starting this, this coming week or the next week? Who hasn't started school yet? You, 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 you. We got a good mix here. And who goes to school all year round? You guys. <laughs> Okay, well look at your backpacks. Oh. Who got a new backpack this year that you're very excited about? Everybody got, everybody got a new backpack? Megan, you gotta let me get a new backpack. <laughs> Come on. I have too many backpacks at home, so I'm not allowed to get new ones until one rips and breaks, but I'll deal. So I'm so glad you guys are here. It is so, so wonderful to see you again. And of course, I wanna bless your backpacks because we don't only learn, we don't only worry about, learn about God and share God's love here in church. God goes with you wherever you go, just like all those things in your backpack. And you deserve to have that little blessing go with you and be told of that. So look at these backpacks of yours. Your backpacks are gonna hold so many things throughout the year, I know, and hopefully not hold any lunch for too long in the bottom of your backpack. Your backpack, backpack is gonna be full of work to be done and returned, books to be read, pencils, pens, and protractors, crayons, rulers, scissors, and glue, forgotten permission slips, that was always mine, past notes, packs of gum, a ton of crumbs, and so many more things. Some days your backpack will feel light and other days it might feel a little overstuffed. And maybe not stuffed with just with belongings, but sometimes our backpacks feel full of all the other parts of life that we carry from home to school and back again, day after day, all year long. You know, I'm not in school anymore and I'm really thankful sometimes because school can be hard, learning can be boring, Growing is hard and growing up is painful. So hopefully both at school and especially here at church, especially here at church, because if it wasn't the case, you tell me. You have friends and adults you can trust and help you carry whatever is making your backpack feel so heavy. And Jesus can always help you with that too. So let's, let's pray for your backpacks. Congregation, let's pray for these backpacks and bless these backpacks. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students, their teachers, and the professionals that will spend the school year learning and growing together. We ask for your blessing on these backpacks that carry all the things to help them work and learn what they need to know and what needs to come home. So as they throw those straps over their shoulders, as they run out of the house and walk through those school doors, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each day and all year long. We pray for our teachers too, those administrators and support staff in our schools. One, because I know you guys, but two, because they have bags and backpacks that need blessings too. May those adults, those who look after you guys, know this congregation embraces them too. Their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care even on the days we're trying to brighten minds, days and futures feels really heavy. We pray all this and so much more in Jesus' name, who we seek to follow day by day, who always goes with us and whose love, unlike our backpacks, will never wear out, tear, stain, or get left behind on the bus. Amen. Okay. Kind of like Lincoln, you guys know I have a bunch of stuff for you. So, we got some things that you can add to your backpack if you like. 
And there's a lot of selections, of course. We got some very nice crosses here, some things that are a little less stiff and breakable. If you want some supplies and some stickers and some crayons, you are welcome to take one of these too. And am I, am I forgetting something that I usually do when I bring you guys up here? I put it in my backpack, of course. All right, you guys. So you can, you can come up, grab what you would like. I am so glad that you are here. I'm so glad we get to see you throughout the year. And we wish nothing but the best for you guys this school year. Feel, feel free to take your time, you guys, no worries. Picking a key, no, I'm serious. Like picking the keychain that you're gonna wear on your backpack for like a whole year and, or until it breaks, that's a serious decision. That's a very serious decision. And that gives us the opportunity to share the peace of Christ as, we, as they all get back to, to their seats. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. Afterwards, we'll receive our offering.
I wonder what was longer, that silence right there, that awkward silence as we just did right now, or when Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? Okay, let us pray, everybody. Lord God, you bless us with so many gifts. Your blessings are abundant and show the wideness of the love that you give to this world through ourselves, our time, and our possessions, the gifts that we share with each other. Continue to bless us to be a blessing so that the whole world may know your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay, announcements time, announcements time. The backpacks have been blessed, the school year is starting, and Sunday school will begin on Sunday, September 10th. That is Rally Sunday, so be ready for that. We are gonna jump back into full swing. But confirmation, you guys know we get to start early. We start this Wednesday at 7 p.m. with the very exciting evening where I get to tell your parents what is up. Everybody's favorite day, everybody's favorite day of the year. That'll be at 7, um, and then afterwards at 7.45, we'll have our first informational meeting for high schoolers who are interested in going to the youth gathering in New Orleans next summer as well. So that is all on Wednesday. Nina, thank you so much for joining us today and singing for us. You're, what a wonderful, what a wonderful voice you have and what a, thank you for sharing your gifts with us. Um, let's see, a couple other announcements. I know there's some floating out there. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Leon told me she had an announcement. Here she comes. I think I know what it's about and it's gonna segue into my next announcement. So good morning, uh, my name's Elizabeth, and it's pretty fitting today based on what the service has been this morning about blessings and gifts and the beautiful music that we heard this morning uh, that I am the choir director here at Zion Lutheran. And I invite you, anyone and everyone, to come and join choir. We will begin meeting on September 6th is a Wednesday at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, we do have a choir room, but at this time we're meeting in the sanctuary. Uh, there's a lot of steps to go down into the choir room, so it's very convenient to meet here on Wednesday nights at six o'clock in the sanctuary and practice. We meet for about an hour, and we sing approximately two Sundays a month here at the church for the services and we plan a Christmas concert and a wonderful Norwegian coffee callus that's done the first part of September, usually the second Sunday of December if that usually works out. And uh, we invite everyone to come to that as well. But I just want to encourage each and every one of you to come and sing. Um, singing is a gift from God, and it is your direct connection of your soul in praising God in which he hears your voice. And God has given a voice to each and every one of you. You might not think that you can sing, but each and every person can because it's given to you from God. So if you can come once in a great while or come every Wednesday, uh, please do that. We sing all kinds of music. You do not have to read music. Most of the members do not read a note, as they can tell you themselves. But we pull it together and sing because each person that is there enjoys singing. So please consider it. Come whenever you can. You are always welcome. Thank you. Sometimes we even enjoy each other's company at choir, too. <laughs> and also, so that starts on Wednesday, September 6th. Also on Wednesday, September 6th, am I right, Jackie? Bible study will start again, meeting regularly, weekly, starting on Wednesday, on Wednesday the 6th, and that is at 9.30, still at 9.30. As of right now, still at 9.30. All are welcome to come and join that, too. Are there any other announcements? I'm very echoey right now. There we go. Any other announcements from the floor that I am missing today? 
I can see the sign up board from here. Well, no, I can't read it from here. I read it earlier when I was standing in the back. And we don't have any, looks like September is filling up, but we still don't have that many greeters. And you know, if nobody signs up to greet next week, I'm not gonna come, because it's a holiday. So, no. <laughs> so, if, if the spirit so moves you, if you wanna share that gift and make sure pastor comes next Sunday, please sign up on the board. No, I will be here, I promise. Okay. Well, we will continue on towards the end of our service. Let's join in praying our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for our blessing today, we're getting crazy here today. We're gonna sing our blessing today. And you can find that in the little insert in your bulletin. We're gonna do it three times that we're gonna go through this three times. First time, Vicky will play. Second time, Nina will sing. And the third time, we're gonna be all in it together. But watch out, because those that last line has a leader and then an assembly line. So if you're, if you're feeling goofy enough to be a leader, I guess go ahead and sing it. Jackie says, no, I will sing what, I will sing only the assembly line. So let's, let's sing our blessing. waiting for the bell. Maybe it'll come. There it is. And our closing hymn this day is number 543, Go My Children With My Blessing.
So now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.